This is a demonstration of using the LSF solver and equalizer for doing optic tracks on this eyeball shot. So the LSF solver is here, or I have it hotkeyed to L. LSF solves can use any combination of the seven degrees of freedom, the translation, the rotations, and the focal length to be enabled or disabled. So we go to LSF. We've got the seven degrees of freedom, three translations, three rotations, and the focal length. So if we're on an object, of course, the focal length will be disabled. And if we're on a camera, then the focal length will be enabled. And then, of course, we can go in and have all these different combinations of what solves and what does not solve. So the constraint system here is that if it says calculate, it'll solve. And if it says lock the dynamic curve, then it will not solve. We'll just use whatever's in the curve editor. For this optic track demo, we'll demonstrate one point and two point solves. So here we see that for the eye, we've got two survey points. So this is a two point solve. So that'll be our first solve. And now for our second solve, we'll disable one of these points and we'll do a one point solve. So here, we'll calculate all the rotations with two different points. And notice there's only a slight error. Hit Use Result. And this looks gorgeous just with these two points. When all three LSF rotations are unconstrained, as we just saw in our example, then the solve will probably not suffer from crosstalk. But as soon as we start going into one-point solves, we'll see some crosstalk issues. So this is looking nice. So now what we're going to do is we're going to disable one of these points. Uh, one way to do this is we'll just switch it to lineup only. And we'll see right here that um, it's set by default to not include lineup points. So let's go right here to um, lock to dynamic value or lock to static value. Both of these will give us problems. And then we calculate it. Notice the error is always zero because you only have one point. So um, there's you have to have three points. You have to have three uh, points to have a, uh, an error. OK, so now we solve it, use it. And notice it's rotating very weirdly here. The reason it's rotating weirdly is there's crosstalk or perhaps an Euler angle issue or gimbal lock, but really there's crosstalk. The way of solving this problem with one point solves is to use a zero camera point group tool. So what this does is it brings all of the camera rotations to zero, just temporarily. So we see here that we've intentionally set it so the camera is pointing straight down. So if we get the every single frame of the camera to be have zero rotation, then we can use zero camera rotations here. So what we'll do is we'll select the camera, and then we'll zero it out. And so what that does is that now the camera is level. There's no more rotations at all. It's got translations, but uh, no rotations. So that's just a temporary thing. And so the reason for that is that then when we go to the camera, then we can do our solve. So if we do three degree of freedom, it'll be fine. Nope, that's wrong. Oh, of course, we can't do a three degree of freedom solve because. Um, that's disabled. So right here, let's go to static value. And this was screwing up before. So let's see how this looks. So now the solve looks good. Now it's not perfect because we've only got one point. And of course, this is rotating. Um, it's mainly the eye is panning and tilting. And there's going to be very physically, mechanically, a very small amount of uh, role of um, RZ, uh, but again, this to demonstrate the principle. 
Now, when we do all this, of course, the uh, the pivot point here should be in the center of the eyeball. Uh, that's where the real eye rotates from, and it really doesn't make any sense to use rotations. Uh, to use translations when it really should be rotating from the center here. Now, f to solve this, we could actually switch it so that it was translations, and let's try that. So we're going to enable this again, and then we can use a pivot point tool. So we pick the eye. And then we'll pick up. Okay, so now we've got the correct group. Pick a pivot point. Now what we can do actually is that we'll uh, create a locator. And now we can take that locator, we can move it to the center. So we're moving to the center of the eyeball. We have to use this locator because uh, there's no points uh, in equalizer inside this eyeball. Then we use this tool back here, and they will bake the object group instead of to the point. We'll bake it to the locator. So now the entire track has redone, but it's got a new pivot point. Now, if we try to do rotations on this, it'll be sort of dumb because the pivot points are all wrong because uh, all the um, translation points are too far away from the pivot point. So if you were to do it this way, which might be good for some shots, but not for this one. Let's go to static value. I'm going to just grab them here. And then here, let's calculate the x and y. So now it's a little hard to see here. What it's actually doing is it's only it's translating instead of rotating. Yeah, we can see it here. So this is a very dumb example, but we did want to look at this because there's many shots where you do want to use translations instead of rotations. Now, if you have a, the more translation and rotation channels that are enabled for LSF solve, the more survey points that are needed. So for a two point solve like this, you actually really need um, three points to be enabled here. And for a one point solve, um, uh, you need one point with survey and you need two points, um, two channels to be unconstrained. So this zero out tool is extremely useful because it gets everything looking down the origin. When you're done using the zero out tool, you just hit restore and what it's going to do is it'll bring everything back down. So the camera goes back to its old move that's been stored and then the object moves right along with it because it's a child of the camera. So the final situation which we don't have a demo for in this video is when LS solving for translations for an object first of all it's still best to use the zero cam point group tool. The reason for this is that it's very useful on a object track to have the screen Z space be the same as TZ. LS sol, LSF solves are always in global space. They're not in local space. So the purpose for this is if we're doing a, going to do a translate, we want this position Z curve to be exactly the same as uh, the motion in Z in TZ, so the screen space for Z would be the same as the global space. This means that there won't be any leakage between the screen X and the screen Y channels. So this means that if the camera is at a slight angle or any angle away from um, zero, that would mean that when you enter 
Z position into your curve editor that it actually is sort of leaking into the X and the Y and vice versa. So if you want to maintain constant depth, it's best to use the zero out tool. So this is always true whether you're doing objects, cameras, uh, or any type of subject matter.